My name is Whitney Snodgrass, and today I will be looking at three different databases pertaining to the topic of religion and philosophy. Uh, when I was doing my undergraduate program, I studied Bible for my degree, and I became very familiar with one database in particular, the American Theological Library Association Religion Database, also known as ATLA. So this is a topic and a database that I have personal experience with, and I wanted to explore today alongside two other research tools for religion and philosophy, namely the Philosopher's Index and the Index Religiosus. Okay, so this is the site where I located all three of my databases, and I just used my student access on the University of Alabama's library page to see what databases I had avail available to me. And here I just use the subject search to look for uh, philosophy and religious studies. So I selected that category and I found ATLA, Religion Database, along with Philosopher's Index. And then further down I found Index Religiosus. And Index Religiosus was the only one that was not listed up here on the best bet list. And so I kind of assumed that that one would be of a lower quality than the other two. Okay, so from this website, I can hop directly into an advanced search in the ATLA Religion Database. And up here it shows me what database I'm searching. And I can even use multiple databases at the same time, if I so choose. Uh, this is powered by EBSCOhost, as are most of the databases that University of Alabama offers. And so... There is a basic search option, but here in the advanced search, we've got uh, multiple search search bars. Uh, we can specify what we're looking for, such as text, author, the title, or even all the way down here, we can look for a certain subject. And then further down here, there's a lot more filters that we can add, such as publication type, genre, language, lots of stuff. So I'm just gonna start simple. And I'm going to search for Ancient Greece, and I'm going to search for it as a subject. And I get about 500 results. And if I get rid of the subject filter, it will widen my search, and I'll end up with almost 900. And if I want to narrow that down, I can either enter a field up there, or I can use something over here on the left sidebar. Uh, I can look for something with an abstract, I can choose a publication date, I can specify if I'm looking for a book or an essay, and lots of different stuff. So if I click on one of these results, then it will show me all the details that the database has available on this particular, on this particular resource, uh, such as subjects, like search terms, uh, publication type, author, publisher, etc. Over here on the left, this is where it would put a full text link if it had access to the full text. Uh, this article, however, it does not have a full text, or it, it does, but this database does not have access to it. So instead it has a link to an external search for full text elsewhere where it might be provided. Then over here on the right, we've got different research tools that you can use to either save save something for later, it can give you a citation. It, it can actually craft you a citation in MLA, APA, Turabian, plenty of others. Uh, you can write notes on it, you can share it, lots of stuff. Okay, so this is basically what an ATLA search looks like. And here is the ATLA Religion Database homepage or where you can learn more about the database itself and its contents. We can see here, we can see the number of records contained in the database, which is almost 2 million overall, which includes journal articles, essays, reviews, books. And then we can see the different areas of study that it covers under, it covers Bible, archaeology, world religions, you name it. Uh, it also has some basic information on submitting material into the database and also gaining uh, a subscription to the database. And so now we're going to go and we're going to look at the Philosopher's Index. And we can go back to the University of Alabama library page and click on this right here. And just like with ATLA, it will take us right into 
an EBSCOhost advanced search. And it's going to look very similar, almost exactly alike the ATLA search. There we go. And we can see up here what we're searching. And we've got the basic search there. And we see there's a lot less options down here just because it's a different database. So we can only search for document type or language and a couple other things. But we're going to do the we're going to do the same search that we did before. We're going I'm going to look for ancient Greece. If I can spell it right. There we go. And we're going to search for it as a subject. And see we only get 19 results. And so what and I think the reason for this poor turnout is because uh, ATLA has a stronger focus on religion, and so it's going to uh, have more subtopics like uh, church history or history of the Bible or um, archaeology, and all that stuff actually has something to do with ancient Greece. But a philosophy database is much more likely to have material on the subject of logic. So I'm going to search for logic under subjects, and we see I get over 42,000 results. And that's a lot to wade through. So if I want to narrow that down, I can use any of the other filters here on the side to specify, say, if I'm looking for a book, that's only about 5,000 results. So if I click on one of these, then we see all the same details. We see subjects, search terms. We have a little abstract here that kind of sums up what the article is about. And then over here, we actually have a linked full text where I can read the entire article. And then on the right, you've got the same research tools as, as, as ATLA. And that's just because it's all, it's all through EBSCOhost. Okay, so that's how you use Philosopher's Index. And this is the home page where you can learn more about the database and its contents. And here we see the number of records, the number of countries that they come from, all the languages that they're written in. Uh, we've got information on the editors right here. Uh, all the coverage, all the extra features offered. But what I want to look at is up here. I want to click on this little link, Subject Areas. And that will take me to a page that has a nice little list that covers all the different subtopics of philosophy that is covered in this database. And then even here I've got visuals. I've got network graphs that show me the topics covered in this database. And this can help a database user if they're trying to widen or narrow their search. Let's say they were searching for uh, mind. But mind is so vague. It's very general. So if they want to specify it or narrow it down, they can search for materialism or physicalism. Or if you've got something that's super specific, like, I don't know, hermeneutics, then you can link it to language or phenomenology if you want to widen your search and get more results. So this is very useful for a database user in searching for a particular topic. Okay, so now we're going to look at Index Religiosus, and if you click here it will take you straight to this page, which is just a basic search. And here we have the option for a more advanced search, which includes free search, bibliographical search, where you can specify publication year, and then we've got special limiters for church history and theology, which is the biggest focus of, of this particular database. And so what I can do is up here I can search ancient Greece and right here it will calculate and it will tell me how many results I'll get. And it's not many. It's only 31. So what I will try instead is down here under church history I'm going to search a geographical area. And here I've got Eastern Mediterranean. And I will insert that into my search. And I get over 5,000 results. And so here is the list of the 5,000 results. And the first thing to note is that there's a bunch of different languages here. This is an international bibliography and the and the page actually can show up in multiple languages. It takes sources from all over the world. So that is something to be mindful of when using this particular bibliography. Now over here we've got this little icon. That is the church history icon for this website. And that's popping up all down the board because we use the church history filter to look for uh, 
geographical location. And then here we've got these little icons that indicate the type of source that we're dealing with, such as an article in a book or if we're looking at an entire book. So if I click on one of these, just like before, it's got all the details about the publication and there we see the area that we searched for. If it had a link to full text, it would be down here at the bottom. Most of these don't have a direct link to a full text, but most of them have external links, either to Google Books or to a different source that does offer the full text. Okay, so here we have the introduction tab, and this is sort of the about page for the Index Religiosus, and you can see a little bit about its history, its background, uh, the number of records it has, the areas it covers, details about the editorial team, etc. So after comparing these three databases, I've come to the conclusion that they are all in their own ways reputable and dependable tools for research on religion and philosophy. The ATLA database is by far the largest and focuses mainly on the topic of religion, and it allows itself to delve deeply into the numerous subtopics within. The Philosopher's Index has a, a very similar objective of exploring deeply into the new, uh, exploring the many facets of one particular broad topic, but it functions on a slightly smaller scale than ATLA as it doesn't contain nearly as many records. The Index Religiosus functions very limitedly and focuses mostly on two subtopics of religion, church history and theology. However, for those two areas, it offers quality sources easily and without a subscription required. So while they may be vastly different from one another, all three databases work well in their own way, and they all aim for the same goal, to assist in the study of religion and philosophy. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate you listening.